Within the concentration camps of the Second World War, there were a number of barbaric and brutal female guards who at the end of the conflict were executed for their crimes that they committed upon thousands of prisoners. Inside of Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, the British liberators came across a horrific sight of torture, depravity and evil, and they discovered 10,000 unburied corpses. Amongst the death, there were a number of SS guards who remained at the camp who were ordered to then clean up the camp. But one of these women was Joanna Borman, who was known as the woman with the dogs. Borman was a woman who was ruthless and barbaric, and her evil knew no bounds. And for her crimes, she had a date with the British executioner, Albert Pierrepoint. But... Following her execution, her remains were actually exhumed and were dug up in what was a controversial and shocking episode in the 20th century story. Joanna Borman worked inside a number of different concentration camps. She first worked at the first female camp of the Third Reich, known as Lichtenberg, but then she moved to Ravensbrück, another all-female camp, And while she was here, she underwent further training in how to brutalise and terrorise prisoners. She worked inside of Ravensbrück for some time. Then in 1942, along with many other women, Bormann was transferred across to Auschwitz inside of Poland. Auschwitz became the largest and deadliest killing site of the Holocaust, and it expanded to a huge extent to slaughter as many prisoners and victims as possible, and Borman was known for her evil treatment of prisoners. They nicknamed her the Weasel, as well as the woman with the dogs, and many witnesses claimed that they saw this pet being set upon inmates who were then bitten and were mauled, sometimes even to death. Borman encouraged her animals to attack prisoners. Two witnesses claimed that they saw her dog attacking a woman, and that Borman boasted to a number of SS men after she had encouraged the dog to attack the prisoners. In another account, by Mrs Vera Fisher, she said that Borman was in charge of women prisoners outside the camp, and that she set her large dog onto them if they became weak and refused to work properly. She even went further, saying that a number of the women prisoners attacked by Borman's dog actually were taken to the hospital, and they died of blood poisoning from infection, and the fact they were denied proper medical care. Also, a number of women who were injured by the dog were sent to the gas chambers. Joanna Borman denied this, but the accusations continued. A lady, Helena Coper, said that inside of Auschwitz, Borman, as the most hated person in the camp, and while she oversaw the clothing store, she encouraged her dog to attack prisoners. On one instance, Borman noted a prisoner taking something, and she grabbed her by her hair, threw her to the ground, and then let her dog bite her, which caused an injury so great that there was a huge pool of blood. A doctor then arrived to examine her, and there was no movement, and the woman was then sent straight to the gas chambers to be killed. The dog also attacked a woman so badly that she was sent to the hospital where she stayed for six weeks. But she did not need her dog. She also had a violent side herself and she struck one woman as this prisoner could not walk to the work site as she was sick. When this woman got there, Borman hit her so hard that she knocked out two of the female prisoner's teeth and then set her dog on the woman where she was bitten so badly so that she then died inside of the camp's hospital. She was seen by others beating prisoners for different reasons, and also forcing inmates to undress and then take part in ruthless exercises. She did, at her trial, admit to hitting some prisoners, but one of the most shocking crimes she committed was to get involved in the selections. When new inmates arrived at Auschwitz, some inmates were sent to the left, and some inmates were sent to the right. Those who were considered too weak to work, or if they were children, women, or the elderly, they were more likely to be selected to go to the gas chambers. Those people who made these decisions were the SS guards. 
and Borman regularly did this, and she sent many to their deaths. She was transferred away to Auschwitz, and she then ended up inside of Bergen-Belsen at the end of the conflict. She worked under other SS brutes, including Josef Kramer, the Beast of Belsen, and she worked alongside other notorious women, such as Irma Grazer and Elizabeth Volkenrath. But Bergen-Belsen was a site which became run down, and conditions broke down as thousands of inmates were moved there. When the British army liberated the camp, they were disgusted by what they saw, and as mentioned, 10,000 corpses lay around the camp. But Joanna Borman was ordered to help clean up the bodies, and she was pictured doing this. She was then brought to the Belson trials, and she was then condemned to death for her crimes. Executioner Albert Pierre Point, inside of Hamlin Prison, performed the execution of the woman with the dogs, and he claimed that she limped down the corridor looking old and haggard. She was 52 years old, standing only a little over five feet. She was trembling as she was put on the scales, and in German she said, I have my feelings. Her execution was carried out third of those condemned during the Belson trials, but her remains were then collected after she had been sent through the trap door, and she was to begin with buried inside of the Hamlin prison's courtyard near to the execution chamber. The British had possession of the prison for that time after the war, but then in the years after, they wanted to hand the prison back to the German authorities, and because of this, there was a decision made to exhume the executed guards of Bergen-Belsen. In March 1954, the decision was made to exhume the bodies of the executed guards of Bergen-Belsen, including Joanna Borman, and the authorities then dug up the ground, and they came across the body of Borman. Her remains were identified in accordance with the records of the prison that said where the graves specifically were. But in total, 91 bodies were dug up from the prison yard, and those, including Borman's, were then placed into new coffins, and it was taken out of the prison to the nearby Hamlin and Well Cemetery. The cemetery had been used for World War I burials, and it was also where civilians had been buried, but it was decided that this was the place to inter the executed war criminals. It was said in one article from the time that British occupation authorities refused to interfere with German authorities who moved the bodies from a mass grave to individual plots in the city cemetery after a campaign by neo-Nazi elements in Hamlin, Lower Saxony. 30 of the 90 bodies of the executed Nazi war criminals have already been moved from a common mass grave near Hamlin and reinterred into the city cemetery. The remaining bodies will be moved later. Among those reburied are Joseph Cramner, named the Beast of Belson by inmates of the notorious death camp, and Irma Grazer, who hounded women prisoners at Belson. Joanna Borman's executed remains were then interred on a patch of grass next to a path and they are still there today. At some time, memorials were permitted to mark the burials, but because of the negative attention, these were then removed. She was reburied alongside the executed other guards of Bergen-Belsen, but the woman with the dogs was known for her brutality and evil inside of the different concentration camps where she worked. Joanna Borman was an ardent Nazi, and it was known that she, the night before her execution, sung pro-Hitler songs whilst on death row. But what is shocking is that still today her remains exist on this earth. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.